Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, and welcome to Saturday Morning with Pillow Talk Derm, where we are covering your favorite topics every single week. I am a board-certified dermatologist. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below to tune in every week to see how I can help you help yourself. The Derm Store is having a massive Black Friday sale, so I thought here's another chance to get you guys some of the best deals so you can help yourself. We're going to go through all the products by category, and I just want to make it clear from the very beginning of this video that I am not sponsored by any of these brands. What I am going to recommend is purely from a place of liking a product and a place where I have seen it help my patients firsthand in my practice. It turns out that a lot of the cleansers on Durham store that I'm going to recommend are by La Roche-Posay. So please do not think that this section is sponsored. I have La Roche-Posay's Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. The reason I like this one is that it is a milky cleanser. It comes on and it does definitely feel nice enough to be a very lightweight lotion. So it's a very hydrating cleanser. It has no scent, really nice, really gentle, and honestly, it does make your skin feel softer. The next one is their purifying foaming cleanser. So if you have a lot of oily skin or if you live in a very humid climate and you're just trying to get your skin to get a little bit more regulated, their foaming cleanser is also a very nice one as well. They also, however, have their Lipicar wash, which is a gentle foaming moisturizing wash. So if you're looking for a foaming cleanser, but you're looking for one that is not going to overly dry you out, or let's just say you are on the drier side, but you prefer something foamy versus creamy, I would go for the Lipicar AP+. Plus. It is a very gentle cleanser that does foam and that tends to be milkier versus their purifying foaming cleanser. So we have their Effaclar gel cleanser. So a 2% BHA salicylic acid. So in a routine, I would not use this than this. You're double dipping. It's way too much for a single routine. Now, if your routine is a weekly routine and not a daily routine, and you want to use this on Monday and you want to use this on Tuesday and Wednesday or Thursday, sure because you're not using them on the same day during the same routine. This is a sal acid cleanser that's great for oily skin or acne prone skin. Let it sit on your face, it has an active, and so you wanna let sure that that active is having face time with your face before washing it off. The last one is the Elemis Pro Collagen Oil Balm. Let's go see if I have it in my skincare closet, shall we? I have it right here, actually. That was pretty easy. It is a very thick oil-based balm. This is great for heavy makeup users, not for people who don't wear that much makeup. It is never going to be a single cleanse cleanser. It is one that you're going to have to follow up with another cleanser after that because it's very oily and it smells like a spa. Before we jump into chemical exfoliants, two things. I prefer using them at night because they make you more sun sensitive and it makes more sense to use a chemical exfoliant at night as it washes the day off and clears all that crud off of your face. Number two, when it comes to chemical exfoliants, I think it's very important that you as the consumer know the percentage of the chemical being used, especially if you are sensitive. If the brand does not have it on the box, feel free to email them. A lot of times they will let you know what type and how much is being used. But it's one of the few ingredients in which the percentage absolutely matters. So jumping in with the one that actually talks about the percentage is Paula's Choice. Their 2% BHA is a salicylic acid quote unquote toner. Toners mean nothing, FYI. I'm just using that word because that's the word people know how to recognize a liquid exfoliant through. But it is a 2% salicylic salicylic acid chemical exfoliant that you can use, especially if you have oily skin or acne prone skin. If you overdo it, just be aware because your skin might overproduce oils. And if you have another quote unquote toner in your regimen, just make sure it doesn't have salicylic acid in it as well. Moving on from salicylic acid to Sunday Riley, good genes. This is a lactic acid a serum. Lactic acid is really nice for people who have discoloration. The one thing is they do not disclose the percentage and it is a steep price. So if you're going to buy this, buy this now when it's on sale. It's a luxurious experience. Before last is Kate Somerville. Kate Somerville has her exfoliate intensive exfoliating treatment. It 
It looks like a physical scrub, but it is not. It's an enzymatic scrub made up of papaya, pineapple, and pumpkin enzymes that helps to exfoliate your skin without overstripping it and by avoiding micro tears. It also has lactic acid and salicylic acid in it. I love enzymatic scrubs because it like it's that thing that scratches that itch if you feel like you want to buff your skin to perfection. But I will just say, be careful if you have a lot of active acne because sometimes I don't want you just by like going like this to be irritating or inflammatory on your inflammation. First Aid Beauty. They're Fab Pharma White Clay Acne Treating Pads that come with 2% salicylic acid in them, but this is a great acne treatment. Your Dr. Dennis Gross. He has his Alpha Beta Universal Daily Peel Pads, which are made up of step one and step two acids, as well as a retinol. So if you're very sensitive, I would be careful combining the two. I think they come with a lot of waste because they come in individual paquettes. However, they are great for travel. So I have kept a stash of these and set them aside for when I travel and I cannot take liquid exfoliants or larger solutions in my travel bag. So those are my favorite chemical exfoliants. Moving on to mist. So do I like mists? I like mists. However, most people just mist away and then go on about their day, not really locking in the mist. So if you live in a very dry climate, if you are on an airplane, you don't just ever want to mist and walk away without locking it in with some sort of moisturizer. Or you can create your own glycerin based mist, which Monday we'll do a video here on YouTube about that. But I love Aven's Eau Thermale. This is great if you have rosacea or redness. Aven is geared towards people with redness. La Roche Posay has also their thermal spring water as well. Um, but just make sure you're not just misting, right? Well, this way, and walking away. If you are going to mist, if you live in a dry climate, make sure to lock it in with a moisturizer. Otherwise, it's going to evaporate off the surface of your face. Now we're going to go into serums. So serums have become kind of the toners of our generation where people say, I'm using a serum. What kind of serum and what exactly are you targeting? A toner doesn't mean anything unless you define what you're targeting with your toner. Same goes for the serum. So we're going to go by category. If you're looking for serums that have some sort of quote unquote anti-aging, and I hate that term, but pro-aging benefit, then I would say their Skin Medica TNS Essential Serum is a great one because it's a combination of growth factors and peptides that works really well, especially at night. You could use it twice a day, but if you don't tolerate a retinol, then the TNS Essential Serum is one that I would recommend that you use. Plus, I oftentimes recommend it for my patients on the neck and chest because the neck is notoriously cannot tolerate a retinol. Now, if you're just looking for hydration and you want something lightweight, this is another one people often call a toner, but it's not. It's the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. It's extremely lightweight. It's basically like a light water. I did a campaign for them when I was sponsored by them. This was like over two years ago or a year and a half ago where I used this for a month because I wanted to see firsthand what it would do. And I was surprised at how it did increase the hydration level of my skin, but I never use it on its own. I always use it with the same exact moisturizer I was using at the time, but it's a really nice one to add in winter when you are looking to add hydration without adding oil to your routine. So those are the serums for hydration, quote unquote, pro-aging benefits. We're gonna shift gears into pigmentation because this is my sweet spot. Not because I've created the Pillow Talk Dermidrophade line, which is all geared towards evening out your skin tone, but as a cosmetic dermatologist, the first thing you could do to help yourself is to even out your tone. Forget about chasing the wrinkles, forget about lifting your face, forget about revolumizing your face with fillers or doing tightening treatments. If your skin tone is even, you can fool the world into feeling and looking brighter and just more radiant and more alive. So evening out your skin tone is probably my favorite thing to do. We're going to start with SkinCeuticals. They have their OG, the discoloration defense. The negative is that it comes in a dropper. It is 3% tranexamic acid mixed with kojic acid. It does work nicely. This is going to be a home run. It is not going to be a home run on its own. You need to combine different actives targeting different parts of how the pigment is produced in order to really see a difference with your skin tone. But it is a must to include in a routine because you definitely want to use these ingredients as part of your routine to help calm pigmentation. The next one is Paula's Choice. 
and I love this one because it comes in a pump. It's their Discoloration Repair Serum that has the same amount of tranexamic acid as the Discoloration Defense, sorry, by SkinCeuticals, so 3%. It also has 5% niacinamide and the quote-unquote retinol alternative, Bacuchiol, that helps to target visible signs of discoloration as well. If I had to pick, I would pick this one over the other one. It's cheaper and it has a pump but you're not getting the kojic acid in this guy. The last one in this roundup, which I would not necessarily want to put in this category, it's kind of in this category as well as chemical exfoliants, is the glycolic B5 by La Roche-Posay. The reason I put it in this category is because it is a glycolic acid with trinexamic acid in it. So it's a 10% glycolic acid serum. So if you're using a chemical exfoliant, do not use this. If you're not using a chemical exfoliant, use this in your routine, but do not double dip. Otherwise you're gonna be over exfoliating your face and burning your face off in the process. So those are my favorite serums for pigmentation. I am going to shift gears into acne and acne can oftentimes leave post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation marks. So it's good to make sure that you're targeting your acne with actives that are going to help minimize them. I love two for ones, things that you can get multiple benefits from. Starting with SkinCeuticals, their Silymarin CF. This is a combination of 15% ascorbic acid as well as 0.5% silymarin and 0.5% salicylic acid. So it's great if you have oily skin or acne prone skin. I will say if you're sensitive, it might still be too much because ascorbic acid, the pure form of vitamin C can be a little bit irritating. So just FYI. The La Roche-Posay's Effaclar Duo which comes in this very, very nice little tubey situation is also really nice as an acne treatment because it marries benzoyl peroxide as well as the proprietary LHA. It's a micro exfoliating sort of treatment. This one is nice if you have active breakouts. So it's a great spot treatment, I would say. This leads me now to vitamin C. I interviewed Ron Robinson, the chemist behind Beauty Stats Universal C Skin Refiner. It's a 20% pure form of vitamin C ascorbic acid, extremely, extremely strong. 20% is the highest that I would recommend for ascorbic acid, and this one is it. It is a beautiful texture. It never left me feeling any sort of dry or irritated, but again, I'm not that sensitive. So just be careful if you are sensitive and test it first. Sunday Riley has a 15% vitamin C brightening serum with tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, which is a vitamin C ester. So good as an alternative to ascorbic acid, but 15% is still quite high. You really need nowhere more than like four to 5% if you're trying to get your daily antioxidant level in. If you're somebody who is targeting massive discoloration, sure, um, but above 5%, it's kind of like iffy and we don't really know the exact range at which it works perfectly well. La Roche-Posay, also have their vitamin C serum, their pure vitamin C, which is 10% ascorbic acid with salicylic acid as well. So it's another two for one, kind of as a alternative to this one, and it is much cheaper than this one. With the sale, knock yourself out. We then can move in to CE Ferulic, the gold standard for vitamin C, especially the active form of vitamin C combined with vitamin E and ferulic acid. It's a tried and true, a favorite among dermatologists. I'm not sponsored by them, nor have I ever been. People love this. I particularly love their Floritin CF which is 10% ascorbic acid, so it's lighter and it comes in a pump and an opaque one. So this is why this guy has my heart. Those are your vitamin C serums. Then we're going to shift gears and go into the retinol game. Retinols are the golden child of all of your skincare routine. It is the one thing that has truly been proven to promote collagen production over time. I would not be scared that it's going to thin your skin out. Like a lot of the myth sayers out there say, it has truly been tried and true and proven. This is one of the other ingredients in which you need to know the percentage that you are using. And it is one of the ingredients that I do not love as a multi-ingredient story because you really have to titrate how much you can tolerate. I would much rather that you use a retinol or one of the derivatives twice a week, every single week for the rest of your life than you trying to use it every single night and blowing your face off in the process. Or I would much prefer that you use an over-the-counter retinol four times a week for the rest of your life and you can only tolerate prescription once or twice a week as an adjunct than you trying to use something stronger more regularly and inflaming your skin in the process because at the end of the day, inflammation is the end-all be-all 
culprit to aging faster and looking worse. So you definitely want to minimize how much you are causing as an inflammatory process on your skin. So why do we need it? It helps collagen production. It helps to smoothen your skin and help with fine lines. It also helps even out skin tone, but we cannot tolerate it in certain places. Around my mouth is a no-no. I will shed from now until forever if I try to use it around my mouth. On my neck is something that I have developed a Je ne sais quoi too, so I can tolerate it, but I would say be very careful, especially if you are a beginner and use an over-the-counter and a lighter percentage one if you want to try that. Buffer it by putting a moisturizer first and then use the retinol. Do not put it directly on your skin. And around the eyes is something you have to build a tolerance to. There are retinol eye creams, which I will hit on in a second, but if you do not want to invest in a retinol eye cream and you have a retinol, Put a light moisturizer first and then gently dab a little bit on top. Stick to less as less is more when it comes to a retinol because I would rather you use less over time consistently than use a strong one and not be able to tolerate it. So let's jump in, starting with Skin Medica. They have their retinol complexes at different levels, so it's a very easy way for you to titrate how much you want to use. It's travel friendly. It also comes in a pump. Does it have a scent? Not really. Pretty lightweight and easy going. Um, if you do not want to use Skin Medica, SkinCeuticals also has different levels of retinols that you can titrate based on your needs. And these two are available at the Derm store. If you feel like you've tried retinol and you're able to tolerate 1.0, but you're not able to tolerate prescription just yet, Avenz Retronal is an interesting one because it is a retinaldehyde that comes between retinols conversion into retinoic acid. So it is a step higher than a retinol. It is a retinaldehyde. So it's not necessarily for the sensitive souls, but it comes in an opaque pump as well. It is also travel friendly and easy to use. It does not have a scent at all. It's also very thick, which makes it easier to titrate if you want to try using it around your eyes. Less is more if you do not tolerate it very much or if you think you may be sensitive or you just don't know. It also has FYI proelastin peptides that help to visibly fill in those very, very fine lines. Adapalene used to be known as different and this used to be prescription only. It's a second generation of retinoids and better geared towards acne, skin, acneic skin, blackheads, whiteheads, comedones, you name it. La Roche-Posay has their Adapalene 0.1% treatment as well. First Aid Beauty also has their Fab Skin Retinol Serum at 0.25%. It is a beginner's one. So if you're somebody who wants to dip their toes into the retinol game, First Aid Beauty is one that I would say is worth looking into. Those are all of the retinols available. If you want to incorporate a retinol eye cream, I love Kate Somerville's retinol eye cream. I've been speaking about this one for years. I like it because I love the applicator tip that it comes in. It also has a firming eye complex in it, but it's just so luxe. And this metal piece around it just helps to de-puff a tiny bit as well because of the cooling sensation of the metal. It is a beautiful gift to give and a beautiful product to use if you need a retinol eye cream. Be careful on your upper eyelids. I probably would not go on the upper eyelids with this because you will probably break out in some kind of sensitive reaction. Other eye creams, Neocutis has their Lumiere Firm Illuminating and Tightening Eye Cream with growth factors, peptides, caffeine, and vitamin C. But moving on to moisturizers, because who doesn't love a good moisturizer? We're going into winter. The Cicaplast Bone B5 is great if you have a rosacea prone skin or you have very sensitive skin because of the B5 and the zinc. I love this at night. I use this to baste my face. <laughs> I look like a cupcake and I do not care because no one's going to see me before I go to sleep, but I absolutely love it. SkinCeuticals has, then I finished this one, but they're yummy triple lipid cream. Um, by SkinCeuticals. It has essential oils in it, so if you're sensitive, just be careful. It's not necessarily geared towards sensitive skin, but it is extremely luxe and hydrating, which leads me to Augustinus Butter. Is this guy worth it? Let's see how much does he cost. 280 bucks. It does have hyaluronic acid in it. I am not saying hyaluronic acid is the devil, but you never need a hyaluronic acid serum. FYI, notice I do not have any hyaluronic acid serums dedicated in this lineup. 
But if you're looking for something with HA, if you're looking for something that is luxe to give, I would say give this one a shot. I personally really like their body cream that comes in the jar and I don't have it here, that round tub versus this one. And I like it very much so on my neck and chest. I think you can get way more bang for your buck from that one, to be very, very frank. But the Augustus Butter Rich Cream has a cult following and it is also included in this lineup. So if you're looking to gift it to somebody, why not buy it now? Uh, Willita Skin Food is pretty cheap to begin with, but I use it on my lips. I sometimes use it on the high points of my face just to give my skin an extra glow, if, especially if I'm feeling dull. La Roche Posay has a two for one that I like. It's a sunscreen moisturizer. It is their SPF 30 Tolerian Double Repair Face Moisturizer with sunscreen. It is chemical sunscreens, avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene in the US. Um, and it could be a little sensitizing around the eyes if you have sensitive eyes, but it's it's a great two for one if you do not want to have a separate step of a moisturizer and a sunscreen, which leads me to my sunscreens. So if you're looking for something for the body, Super Goop Play is a great one. You can use it on your face. So there you just increase the value of this guy because the Super Goop Play is 22 bucks compared to their glow screen, which I love for the face, which retails for 36 bucks. It's much bigger and it's cheaper, but you're not gonna get the glowy effect of the glow screen. The glow screen makes you look like a disco ball. You hardly need any makeup when you use it. It's a little too shiny for some people, but I like it. It makes me happy. SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion UV Defense is another one. Whenever you hear that little ball, you have to shake it really, 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 really well in order to make sure that it's well homogenous and mixed well together. It's an OG, extremely lightweight. Color Science also has their SPF powders. SPF powders are not going to give you the same protection as an SPF in a liquid form, but something is better than nothing. Always, always, always. And I use SPF powders when I'm on the go or if I have a full face of makeup or if it's very humid and it's hot. It just allows to soak up all that extra oil while protecting your face in the process. But it's never going to replace your sunscreen. They also have their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Body Shield SPF, which is a mineral sunscreen for your body, which is hard to find, believe it or not. This one is a chemical one. If you're looking for something with zinc or titanium, Color Science has a big one for your body and I use it whenever I go on vacation. So with that, we have our germ store lineup. I have given you guys two different retailers in less than a month with a bunch of products that you guys can knock yourselves out with. I hope the tips in this video were helpful. I hope the lineup was helpful. I am lisping because I am tired, but I wish you guys a beautiful, beautiful holiday weekend coming up. And I hope you get to eat a lot of turkey. I will be videoing what I'm cooking because I'm cooking for 20 people. And I will be sharing some Thanksgiving treats with all of you guys on my stories. Have a beautiful Saturday and I will see you guys next week.